We're on chapter 24 of Crenshaw, and my cat is trying to join us. She can't decide if she wants to jump up or not, so. <clears throat> so, they were living in their car, in their van. <coughs> yes. The next day, we dropped my mom at her part-time waitress job. Before she got out of the car, she looked at my dad and said, we have, we have to apply for insurance, Tom. We'll be back on our feet before they deal with all the paperwork, he said. Still, plus, we probably make too much money to qualify for help. Still, they looked at each other for a few long seconds. Finally, my dad nodded. We went to an office called Social Services to find out about help. You reading to me? My dad filled out lots of forms while Robin and I sat on hard orange chairs. Then we went to three hardware stores where my dad put in applications for work. My dad grumbled about all the gas we used up. To cheer him up, I said maybe we could feed the car water instead. He laughed a little then. Not having enough work is, is tough work, my dad told my mom when she joined us in the car after her shift. He took a deep breath and blew it out hard, <sighs> like he was facing a birthday cake with too many candles. Dad, I said, I'm kind of hungry. Me too, buddy, he said, me too. Almost forgot, my mom said, reaching into her tote bag. I grabbed some of the bagels that the chef was about to throw out. She pulled out a white paper sack. They're pretty stale though, and they're pumpernickel. Well, that's a start, said my dad. He stared out of the window. After a moment, he clapped his hands. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Guess I can't stall any longer. My mom touched his shoulder. Are you sure about this, Tom? She asked. I get my paycheck tomorrow. You could go to the food pantry or the shelter. <laughs> nope, I got this, he smiled. But it didn't look like a real smile to me. I'd rather do a little performing than stand in another endless line at some office waiting for a handout. We drove back to the back of, uh, to the back of a restaurant. My dad found a nice clean box in the dumpster. Are you are you making the begging sign? I asked him. He'd been talking about it off and on with my mom since our money was stolen. Given that I'll be singing for our supper, <clears throat> he said. As he tore the box into pieces, I prefer to call it a request for gratitude, oh, gratuities. What's a gratuity, I asked. A tip, money you give someone like a waiter, my mom said. When we were young, your dad and I used to be street performers before we had regular gigs. Lots of musicians do it. <laughs> I've got this down to a science, said my dad. First off, you need a cardboard sign. Then you need a busy intersection. The best corners have long stoplights. It might not hurt to take Aretha, my mom said. People love dogs, I told my dad. I bet you'll make a lot of money, a lot more money with the dog. Can I borrow a marker, Jackson? My dad asked. I handed him my blue marker. That guy on the corner by Target, he has a puppy. My dad studied a, uh, a cardboard rectangle. No prop puppies. Right. God bless, at least, said my mom. Everyone writes, God bless. Nope, as it happens, I have no idea what God is up to, my mom sighed. My dad scribbled something on the cardboard like he was in a hurry to be somewhere else. He held up the sign and asked what we thought. I didn't, give, I didn't answer right away. In my second grade, my dad got, oh, in second grade, my dad got a D in penmanship, which is how you make your letters. He did not improve with age. What's it say? I said, thank you. Looks a lot like, thank you, he shrugged. Even better. <laughs> thank you, Kitty. She's enjoying the story. We're on to chapter 25. We drove to a busy corner and parked next to Starbucks. It was a cool and rainy kind of day. Are you sure about this? My mom asked. Let me join you. Won't be the first time I've played an outdoor concert, my dad said. And you can't come with me. Someone needs to stay with the kids. We waited in the minivan, watching him <laughs> as he crossed the street. He had his sign and his uh, guitar, but no Aretha. 
My dad stood in, on the, the lane divider by the left-hand turn signal. He propped his thank you sign against his open guitar case. We couldn't hear him singing. There's too much traffic. We need, he needs to make eye contact, my mom said. The light turned red and a line of cars formed next to my dad. Someone beeped his horn and my dad looked over. A driver in a taxi passed him some money. The next time the light was red, a driver in the pickup truck gave my dad coins. When the light turned green, people mostly just passed by, their eyes on the road straight ahead. But a few smiled and nodded. Red, green, red, green, the hour wore on. When he climbed back into our van, my dad smelled like car exhaust. He passed my mom a handful of watered up bills and some coins. Seven lousy bucks and change. It's really starting to come down, my mom said. People don't like to open their windows when it rains. She gazed at the wet dollar bills. We should try up by the mall. Maybe it's just a bad corner. My dad shook his head. Maybe it's a bad idea. We need the rain, I said, because of the drought and all. Good point, my dad said. Let's look on Jackson's bright side. After a while, the rain slowed to a drizzle. We drove to a park so my mom and Robin could get some fresh air. She said Robin was going stir crazy. How about you come too, Jackson, my mom asked as she undid Robin's car seat straps. Nah, too wet. You're both going to get wet, my dad warned. Warned. Robin's getting antsy, my mom said. We can dry our clothes on top of the car when the sun comes out. Day just gets better and better. My mom leaned across the seat and, uh, and said, good times. I stayed in our minivan with my dad. Aretha, who smelled a little ripe, was sleeping in the back. I decided to draw a new sign for my dad, a better one, like the one my mom had made for our bathroom door. I tore some cardboard, bo uh, cardboard off the end of my sleeping box. Then I made a smiling fish sitting in a canoe. He was holding a fishing pole and wearing a floppy hat. In big letters, I wrote, I'd rather be fishing. My dad was dozing in the driver's seat. His eyes were closed, but he wasn't snoring, so I knew he wasn't serious. I poked him with my sign. Try this next time, Dad. He blinked, rubbed his eyes, and took the sign from me. For a long time, he stared at it. Great job, he finally said. I rather like the mustache on the trout. Nice touch. Just FYI, rather has an E and ID. Oh, never mind. It's great, kiddo. Thanks. If it gets wet, we could grab some more cardboard and I'll make a new one. My dad set the sign down gently on the passenger seat. When he opened the door and stepped outside, it was misty. Leaves were shiny and drippy, dripping. Mom says she's only seen my dad cry three times when they got married and when Robin and I were born. I watched my dad lean against the hood of our car and covers, cover his eyes with his hand. His face was damp, but I told myself it was probably just the rain. Oh, it's hard to see your parents upset, isn't it? Isn't it, kitty? So we'll leave it there in Crenshaw, and next we'll pick it up at chapter 26. And kitty will probably enjoy it again.